Welcome back to my animation channel. Thanks very much for joining me. This is a scene that I'm building for my animating in open tunes course. And it will be a scene of a couple of characters down by the dock. And this little boy has a ball which he drops and will later drop into the sea. And in this video, we're just going to look at the basic ball bounce. So the first part of this move, we, we're going to be doing the ball bounce. Now the ball bounce is a classic animation exercise. It has a bit of speed in, speed out in it. It has a bit of squash and stretch so we're going to look at both those things to make this ball look realistic in the bounce so we've got these two characters that we've created and the ball and in this video we are going to bounce the ball the classic bouncing ball animation this line represents the ground just moving that down and then let's get going with this we can turn these characters off all the layers just turn them off we just want the ball and we want the ground line let's just lock these so that we don't mess with them and then make sure we have the right column selected zoom in a bit here and let's extend this down to say 120 frames which will be what five seconds i don't know how long this is going to be but let's start there and then with your animation key on take the center and put it down at the bottom you'll see why later and then we can start positioning these. Let's just put a key in, press F, and that will put a key in there at frame one. Let's just go back here. We haven't got the ground line down to the bottom, so let's just do that. Go fill those cells in. Let's start again. Frame one, just put a key in, just hit the frame and hit F on your keyboard, shortcut. And then let's go down to, let's put it at 24 frames. So that'll be a second. I doubt it will be that, but let's start with 24 frames. Drag it down. And when you drag it, keep the shift key on your keyboard down and that'll constrain it to that Y axis. Put it on the ground so that the center is on the ground line there. And then let's go down to 42 for its bounce, its first bounce. And let's put on the onion skins, put one on at 24 and one at zero. And then with the ball selected, we can drag it back almost to the initial position. And that will be our first bounce. Also keep the shift key constrained. And then let's go down, say, to 54. So these gaps are becoming less and less. And this will be the return to the ground level. Shift key, drag it down, constrain it to the Y axis. And let's go down maybe to frame 62 and do its bounce. Okay, we've left all these onion skins selected. Let's just organize them. Almost halfway back up on the bounce. And then maybe four frames later, 66, drag it down again to the ground. And then maybe two frames, 62 on its bounce. And then another two frames, 70 and drag it down to the ground. So there's your basic bounce. Let's just play that out and see how it looks. <laughs> okay, it's very slow. Because this ball isn't very high, it's a little kid holding the ball. It doesn't have far to go. So a second is far too long. So let's go back and drag that up, that first key to 12. And let's go drag all these up. So 12, 22, etc. Just drag them up. 30, 36, 40... 42 and maybe 43 at the end there and let's just go play that out okay it's a lot quicker just extend maybe this last one at 43 just pull it down to 44 for that last little bounce there okay that looks a little bit better time wise but we can see that we need to work on the actual speed of this it's very stiff if you want to call it that so let's go fix that up and how to do that, we want to pull up the function editor. There it is there. And you can see the column that's been highlighted, column 5, ball in yellow there. Let's go click on that. And you can see all the axes here. The X hasn't changed. It's not going left or right, east or west. The Y is the one that's changing. That's north, south, up, down. So that's the one we want to fiddle with. And so let's select that and then go up to this button here, these little boxes here, click that and it will bring up your function curves, which puts all of this data into nice curves that we can work with. You can either work with the data in the columns there, the numbers, or you can work with the curves. Most people like to use the curves because it's visual. 
and we obviously working in a visual medium size this so that we can work with it and then let's go and select this first line and select it and right click this will be from the first move from the top to the earth line to the to the ground line just select it right click and go and select speed and speed out interpolation select the second arm right click speed and speed out third arm speed and speed out and you set bends all those lines into curves so it won't be a linear move it'll be more interpolated and that's the first trick here and you can see what that does to the ball it it speeds into the move and then it speeds out of the move it's it's not a linear move it doesn't start with the same speed it speeds up and speeds down so that's the first thing we can do and you can see already it looks a whole lot better then what we want to do is we want to go here and we just want to just finesse the bottom here we want to come and manipulate the ends of these curves at the bottom here it doesn't speed down when it hits the ground it, it hits it solidly at solid speed so we want it to be coming in and out of that at greater speed so we narrow using these arms here in the node we can narrow that curve at the bottoms and do the opposite at the tops at the tops it's got a nice arcing as gravity kicks in it slows down and then eventually reverses so we want to widen those arcs at the top so we can use the arms to do that and then we can play that out and already very much better so we almost we almost got its move there just click through this yeah I think we we're getting somewhere then the next thing is that when objects move there's a bit of a an animation anyway there's a bit of a squash and stretch and we want to apply that to the ball that'll give it a extra little something so let's go to the scale with animate key on let's go to scale and then on the top here you'll see there's a maintain button and it's selected at none we want to put that at mass so select mass for the maintain and let's go to the first bounce and just go to the key above that and the key below that go put in a key there just press on your keyboard f and a key below it f and then on the key where it hits the ground let's just go with the scale function selected and that maintain on mass let's go squish it and you can see now why you put the center of this object at the bottom because that that's where it will be squishing off if you had left that on the center it would be squishing into the center wouldn't be touching the ground so that's that's what that's for and then let's go put one between the top and the bottom and let's go stretch that one up so as it comes down it stretches as it hits the ground it squashes and there's your stretch and squash and let's just click through these keys and just make sure that yeah just before that impact we can squish it and then just after the impact we can also stretch it sorry stretch before impact into the impact squish and then stretch again so you get that effect of stretch and squash okay that that's looking good and so we do it with the second bounce we can go put one in between the top and the bottom and we can stretch it and then at the bottom put a key above and below the actual contact key and go and stretch it and then on the actual contact go and squish it or squash it technically it's a squash this one again we can put it in between there between the top and the bottom and we can stretch it and then at the bottom there we're getting a bit tight here but we can still fit keys in key above and below go and put those keys in and that'll be your stretch and on the impact line you can squash it and then let's play that out and that looks good you got a bouncy ball let's go render that out and let's go and have a look at what that looks like and there is our bouncy ball that's basically it for now there's our bouncing ball i hope this helped as always if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe to my youtube channel i also have a mailing email that i send out to my subscribers so please sign up for that and otherwise thanks very much for joining my animation channel thanks for dropping in i hope it's been helpful to you i hope i'll see you here again and happy animating out there all the best bye